behavior. And I've been making websites since forever. And I started when I was a kid doing it just for fun, using Flash. And then I got into startups. Then I got a bit done with startups. And then I got into advertising. So I did 3D websites for really big clients. And for the last months, I've started my very own project. And it's the biggest project I've ever been working on. And I'm back to working with servers, doing backends, doing frontend. I mean, I was only doing 3D for the last few years. So it's been quite exciting to check out the new state of things. And for the last two weeks, I've been working on user profiles and I've been documenting the whole process. The result is quite fun. And I think the process is also quite fun. So if you want to see how a full stack developer creates a social app, you're at the right place. Let's get started. All right. So I've been working on desktop FM for a few months now. So I've been developing the visual language and I feel quite comfortable now moving things around. I'm quite uh, rough when I design. I use sketch, by the way, not the most popular and I don't do design systems and I don't do auto layout or any of these things. I just move things around. And after doing it for a while for the same website or the same project, I get to understand the design language and then I translate it into code. So before I show you uh, the design, I want to show you a bit uh, the previous stuff from desktop FM because it kind of shows some parts of the design language and specifically these cards, um, which uh, morph from one state to another state, which is something I'm also going to be using. So here you can see when we click on, on some of the buttons or icons, like the cards flows to different states and then, yeah. So this is the design I've been working on today. Uh, I focused a bit on the creation of an account and some of the functionalities. So first you can see here that uh, the card that I was talking about, but it's been redesigned. So this would be like what everyone sees. And then if you have an account, then you can log in with your email and your password. If you don't have an account, you can join the waiting list. So you can use your name and your email. This button is not gonna show until you actually fill in uh, the, those inputs. This is for if you get an invite, then is this is what we're going to show you from uh, this screen uh, where we just for the email and the passwords, uh, where then we're going to ask for the name and the username. And then it's going to go to an avatar configurator. From there, the user can choose a typography for their name, which I think it looks pretty cool. I don't know. Uh, if we probably should add a new step uh, to the onboarding, actually. Uh, this is a bit how I imagined it, where um, uh, the user can input their name here or change their name and then choose from different uh, typographies. Here, I also designed a bit how the settings could uh, look like. This is when clicking again on this uh, gear here, I tried one version, which is longer. And then I also thought that maybe we can make it into two steps. So it would actually show only this first when 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 we click on settings and then when we click on one of those it morphs it kind of slides a bit like an ios app and then it shows more versions all right um back at it so today i want to work on the codes specifically from the authentication part so creating a user sending invitations signing up logging in uh going to the settings Probably going to try to do the avatar creation, which actually we already have from the prototypes, but I'm not sure. Same for the titles. So yesterday, actually, I worked on this for a bit. I just copied my previous code base where I did some of the prototypes and the landing page. So I copy pasted it and I removed a bunch of stuff that I don't need. And then I want to uh, tell you about my stack. So I'm using Vue. I love Vue. Vue is the best. Vue. I'm super productive with it and yeah, it's just nice and fun to work with. I also use Nuxt and I use 3JS, but that's for another day. My plan for today is I'm going to try to do all the states of that card from the designs. I call it now the dynamic card, by the way, because it's a bit like the dynamic island and it morphs. In any case, uh, I'm going to try to do all the states of the card for the functionality that I told you about that has to do with authentication and I'm going to try to do that in a few hours now in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to try to do the back end. I'm being a bit ambitious, but let's see where we get. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so it's around noon. I've been coding for a few hours now and I spent more time than I thought uh, taking care of server-side rendering. And the thing is, 
I really wanted to have this kind of dynamic carrots that flows from one state to the other. And the thing is, we're still making a website, so I want uh, URLs to work. So the other thing is, I would ideally like that what comes from the server is the contents uh, that we're showing at that point. So that took some time, but it's working now. So if I refresh from here, it reloads immediately from here. I also added a uh, keyboard, um, this stroke event. So I can just press escape or I can click here, or I can actually just use the navigation from the browser. And of course, this is still not validating, but I made it so it only shows this button when clicking and I did spinner. So I also redesigned the cover state. I call this cover. And um, you might remember that I had also kind of a vertical uh, portrait kind of card. But the thing is, when designing these kind of dynamic islands kind of things, it's good to always change uh, the width or the height so uh, the user ca can have the feeling that there's some change in the state. And I had been uh, doing this kind of dynamic uh, blocks for a while, and I already have this intuition, but this got kind of reinforced when I read this amazing article that I recommend everyone to read. It's from Benji, from this company, uh, Family, and uh, they do a really beautiful app where they use also these kind of cards. And uh, he goes into detail on how he designs uh, them. So that's a bit where we are now. I want to add a few uh, more states for the sign up, uh, and then we can start working on the backends. I'll be back in a bit. See ya. Hey there, so it's 6.47 and I've been coding for a bit more. I've added a couple more functionalities to the front end. So now we have a route for the users. So if people go to uh, slash user, they'll be shown a user profile. And then I've added settings for the current user. So if they go to slash app slash settings, and then there's a few URLs, uh, they can change their username, password and stuff like that. And on the front end, I've also added this really nice feature, which is that now I can add uh, transitions that go from right to left or left to right for this sliding animation in the dynamic part. So I think that helps a lot with the context. And of course, I also added keystrokes for escape to go back. The whole thing is working pretty smoothly. I have to say it updates the URL, it morphs the the cards and, and it, it, it changes the contents in a really nice way. All right, guys, so it's 10.40. I've been pushing today. The reason why I've been pushing today is because tomorrow I have to do other stuff. I have another project, uh, three tools, and I have to invite some people and uh, prepare a newsletter because I'm going to open the subscriptions. In any case, I wanted to finish some stuff before I switch to something else. And in any case, I've just been having the time of my life. I haven't been doing backend for a really long time, and I discovered this pocket base. It's amazing. I'm just having the time of my life. Authentication took no time to to be coded. I mean, it works out of the box. And uh, yeah, the API also works out of the box. Like, you can just have fun. So I've been integrating it into my next setup. I got it kind of working. I made it possible to log in and, and to, to, to change the name and like see other people's profiles and stuff like this, but I didn't get all the way there. So I just need to refine that and add all the functionality. I'm not going to show it today, which kind of sucks because tomorrow I need, I need to switch to the other tasks. See ya. All right, guys. So it's now Wednesday. It's been a few days since I recorded for the last time, but a lot has been going on. Firstly, I released uh, or I opened the registrations for the beta for my other project. That was amazing. Maybe I'm going to also document the next time that I open a uh, beta because it's kind of exciting and I think maybe it can also be kind of fun to watch. Also, my really good friend Ogason was playing on Deckmantle, so I could not not go. But yeah, I've been working anyway, like here and there. Uh, it just, I didn't have the energy to get in front of the camera and talk, and I'm still getting used to all this. But in any case, 
we've done quite a bit. We deployed the backends to a virtual machine, which is kind of cool. I deployed the front ends. Uh, use, I use Netlify at the moment. It's working really well. It's really fast. But I think the most visual thing that I've done is I've brought in the 3D uh, stuff that I had from before. So now we have the avatar creator and users can have avatars. So that's a lot of fun. And it's really starting to show how much uh, personalization and self-expression there's going to be in the platform. I'm going to show you where we're at. All right, so here I am at dkp.fm. That's the domain that I'm going to be using and then slash a username, in this case, Xavier, so my name. And you can see that we already brought in the avatars. So if we go here to profile avatar, now we can customize. So we can uh, scroll here through the different shapes. We can also choose different eyes. And we can also choose uh, different colors. I think I still need to tweak some of the colors and I only have four eyes. So after the fourth one, it's always the same actually. So I need to see what do we do there. Um, and then if we want to save, we can click here and then we can go back. And then for now, I only have one typography, but it's already using the right color. So I'm going to probably show you here that if we go to some of the other users, it loads them um, and pitch. So yeah, this is fun. Uh, but yeah, next, I think I'm going to make it so we can choose the typographies um, and then I think after that, it's going to be a lot of bug fixing. So boring stuff, maybe some other cute UI interactions, but yeah, we're getting there. So let's push through it and I'll be back with you with a new update soon. So this is the name and type uh, selector. So I use this slider, like the one that we're using in the avatar editor. And yeah, you can use the arrows, you can use the keyboard and um, yeah, we selected some cool fonts. I like that they're a bit unreadable. Some of them more, some of them less. Uh, also, because this needs to fit, of course, in here, um, I made it so you can not choose more than five characters. Also, some of the fonts don't support numbers, so I'm not using them and also not symbols. So it's a bit of a weird usability thing. I think it's supposed to be a weird uh, UI and like a creative kind of thing anyway. So it's not about like wanting to type in the correct name, but like selecting something that looks cool. All right, I'm about to share with you the final result. But before that, I wanted to share a thought with you. And the thing is, I've been seeing people on Twitter complaining about how complex web development is. So let me share a story. 15 years ago, I tried to make my first uh, full stack app with authentication. And I remember having to code all the login and all the hashing of the password in the da database and all the cookie stuff. It was a full mess. And nowadays you can just use something like pocket base and put it in a virtual machine in a cheap hosting and you set it up, SSH, enter, run it and boom, you're ready to go. And the same with front-end development. I don't use React. I use Vue because I feel cool using Vue. I feel like I can get into flow state. I feel like I can keep fun coding. And same with 3JS. And the thing is, if you think that front-end development is too complex, for sure you haven't seen how it was 15 years ago or when mm, Backbone came after jQuery. And it was crazy. But still, you had to write so much code and so many like binding and unbinding and like yeah, it was a mess. And if you think that nowadays using Vue or one of the modern front-end frameworks is complex, it's because for sure you haven't seen how it used to be. And I'm sorry to break the news, but probably it's a skill issue. And the good news is you can just learn and it's going to take time. Any skill takes time, but once you learn, it's fun. And then you have the power. You can add animations, you can make things feel nice and you're going to make something and look at it and feel it and be like, whoa, did I make this? I didn't even know I can build something like this. And people often forget about how web development is fun and about the craft. Put the time, use the modern tooling and have fun. And after this small rant, let me show you the end result. So this is where we're at. This is the home screen. So here I added this info state with links to Twitter and YouTube and then a waiting list that it's connected to loops, which is an emails platform that I really love. And then we can log in. But before I show you the login, I want to show you the onboarding for new users. So people will get a link like this 
and now this invitation has already been used or it doesn't exist. And I'm going to show you the backend using uh, pocket base. So here you can see that I have users, which have a username, email. This comes uh, by default in pocket base, although I added an onboarding complete property and then avatar property. Then I have a table for avatars, which defines how the avatars uh, look like. And here we have the invites. So for the invites, if I create a new record, it's going to uh, auto generate the ID and then I'm going to click create. And this is what I'm using for the invites. So if I copy this and then I put it in here, then it's going to show the sign up. And now it says, welcome. You have been, you have been invited to desktop FM. So now we can choose an email and I'm going to choose something like this. And then I'm going to choose a password. And now we go into the onboarding. So first it's going to ask us for a username. So I'm going to choose Pano. Then it's going to let us choose an avatar. And of course we can uh, choose here from the sliders, but I finally imported this uh, shuffle feature or random feature. I really love this animation. And I also imported the particles with the stars. So let's choose one that we like, for example, this, and then finally we can choose a uh, type, for example, this. And yeah, small detail now, you just saw a loading uh, indicator or the card uh, morphing into a spinner. We actually don't need to do that, but I added it so we have a bit more of a wow effect. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you saw that small uh, kind of shine effect. I added that because, okay, let me show you now. I can come to settings and profile and, for example, change the avatar. And before I didn't have that shine effect. So, for example, let's change this to gray and now let's save. And before, so if I click save, you're going to see this shine effect. And before I only have this kind of notification here, but I thought it was not clear enough. So, yeah, I'm kind of loving this uh, shine effect. It's like, it makes it, it makes it even more clear that, yeah something has happened successfully. I also added it here. Oops, that slider sometimes is a bit buggy. There you go. I want to tell you also a bit about uh, Loops. I love Loops. Uh, it's uh, a platform for email and it combines uh, newsletters, but also transactional emails. So instead uh, of using a typical SMTP uh, mail server, like Postmark, I think it's a name or recent, I used loops and the thing in loops, I'm going to show you here, probably I will have to blur a lot of stuff, but yeah, the thing is, if I come here to transactional, I can design the emails directly, um, in loops. And then I can send a JSON with information, uh, to loops when I'm using the SMTP, uh, calls, and then it's going to populate the the content. So in this case, the link here, I don't know if we can see it, but it's a variable that comes from, uh, from pocket base. So yeah, let's, I'm going to show you if I come here and I log out and I say login and then forgot, and then let's say I want to reset my password and then I'm going to send it. And then you can see again, probably I will have to blur a lot of stuff right now. Uh, but I just got an email from dkp.fm and then I can renew the password. This is like my API and I'm using the pocket base UI here. I could probably do it in my front end, but probably not many people is going to use this feature. So yeah. So I can just click save and then I can go to sorry, the homepage, and then I can use the new password. Uh, perfect. And yeah, of course, by the way, the other users also work. And uh, for example, this, I mean, the whole thing is so fast, I'm still impressed. All right, this is all for now. I think we got to a pretty cool state. In the next video, I'm going to start adding more customization to the profile. So stay tuned. And also let me know what you thought about the video. See you soon.